All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our RBT practice question series. We're going through the next set of questions together and breaking them down. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're turning, welcome back. Please like and subscribe. Check out btexamreview.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, please let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's keep going. A preschool teacher puts a towel on the ground. She has her students line up and then she tells them, okay, jump over the towel. Then she tells them, run around the towel. Then she tells them, grab the towel. What is the teacher working on? So we're looking at the teacher's behavior. She's trying to obviously teach her students something. We have this towel on the ground, the students line up, and then she tells the students to engage in all kinds of different responses. Jumping, running around, grabbing the towel. And they're all in the presence of that same stimulus, which is the towel. And so when we are engaging in different types of responses or different topographical responses in the presence of a stimulus, what are we doing? What is this teacher teaching? A, response differentiation. Yes, she's teaching the children to differentiate their responses. What's the difference between differentiation and stimulus discrimination? With stimulus discrimination, we're focused on the stimuli. Here, the stimulus is a towel. And that stimulus is not changing. And so if we were to have, let's say, a towel and a cone, and the teacher was telling the students to jump over the towel or jump over the cone, well, then they're discriminating between those different stimuli. But instead, they're differentiating between responses. They're engaging in these different responses. This isn't maintenance. Maintenance occurs after teaching has stopped. She is still currently working with their kids as far as we know. We're not sure if this is a maintenance check or if it's middle of intervention. So we can't really say the teacher is working on maintenance here. And then D, overgeneralization. Ideally, we're not going to be working on overgeneralization because for the most part, overgeneralization is something you want to avoid, but the kids are not overgeneralizing here. They're simply engaging in the responses that the teacher is requesting because the teacher is attempting to teach the kids to differentiate between responses. You have several options for coffee in the morning, but you always choose Starbucks, even though it isn't the best coffee. The reason you choose that Starbucks is it helps you avoid traffic in the morning that you'd experience going to a different place. Avoiding the traffic is what? So we're focused here on avoiding the traffic. And avoiding the traffic in this context is what? Is it antecedent, a consequence, what is it? Well, you go to Starbucks, and then when you go to Starbucks, you avoid traffic. So going to Starbucks, the consequence is avoiding traffic. Now, when we think about consequences, we think about reinforcement, punishment, extinction. Escape and avoidance are most associated with what consequence? Well, negative reinforcement. Because negative reinforcement is the removal of something or the avoidance of something which continues behavior in the future. So you keep going to the Starbucks because you're avoiding traffic in the morning. So that negative reinforcement, the avoidance of the traffic is maintaining your behavior. So is it A, positive reinforcement? No, because avoidance and escape are associated with negative reinforcement. It isn't punishment because your behavior continues, it maintains, it increases. And when behavior maintains or increases because of reinforcement. And so avoiding the traffic is going to be C, negative reinforcement. So again, avoidance, escape, those are most often associated with negative reinforcement. Think about when a maybe one of your clients runs away from the table. Well, if they get out of work, they've avoided or escaped work, and in the future, they're going to run away again because of the negative reinforcement. So avoiding the traffic is C, negative reinforcement. The office manager at an orthodontist office wants to keep her employees happy, including the doctors, technicians, and administrative staff. If the office manager wanted to set up a reinforcement system, what should she do first? All right, you need to put on your behavior analyst hat here. This is a little more of a complicated question, but that's okay. We're going to get better. We're going to get, we're going to learn more detailed ideas, more technical ideas, because it's going to make us better at the exam and better RBTs. So if the office manager wants to set up a reinforcement system, what should you do first? Now, just think about your clients. If we're looking for reinforcers, what do we need to do? Well, we have to identify first 
preferences. Because when we identify a preference, we can then use those preferences to identify reinforcers. So if the office manager wants to set up a reinforcement system, the first thing she's going to need to do is A, conduct preference assessments. Remember the difference between a preference assessment and a reinforcer assessment. Preferences are what they prefer, what they like. Reinforcers actually change behavior. So preference assessments come first. So A is going to come before B. What about C? The office manager should use money as the reinforcer. Well, she has doctors, technicians, and staff. Maybe the doctors don't want more money. Maybe they want time off. Maybe the technicians don't want time off. They want more money. That's why we can't have these one-size-fits-all plan because we're working with humans. Everybody is different. Given that fact, you can't just say, well, everyone gets more time off. Some of that, some of these staff, some of these staff, time off might not be reinforcing. So the first thing this office manager needs to do is A, conduct a preference assessment. From that preference assessment, she can find out what the doctors like, she can find out what the technicians like, and what the administrative staff like. From there, we can figure out what's reinforcing. From there, she can set up the reinforcement system. If you got that one right, fantastic. If not, that's okay. We're learning. Go back and reread or relearn or restudy what's the difference between preference assessments and reinforcer assessments. Dylan has a cavity and is not allowed to drink juice anymore. Now, when he asks for juice in the morning, his mom says, we don't have any more juice. When before, she would give him apple juice. Dylan has now stopped asking for juice. What changed Dylan's behavior? So be careful here, right? So Dylan's got this cavity and he can't drink juice anymore. So before, when he asked for juice, mom would give him juice. Now, she says, we don't have any more juice. So Dylan is no longer receiving that juice. So he doesn't get any more juice. Dylan has now stopped asking for juice. So Dylan was once reinforced for asking for juice. Now he's not. When we withhold reinforcement for previously reinforced behavior, what do we call that? A, positive reinforcement. Well, you shouldn't pick A or B. Why? Well, Dylan's behavior changed because he no longer asks for juice. That behavior decreased. It's gone. And so when a behavior decreases, it's got to be punishment or extinction. So A and B can't even be a consideration. So what about C, extinction? What's the difference between extinction and punishment? Well, extinction is when you're withholding reinforcement for a previously reinforced behavior. Previously, Dylan would ask for juice. He'd get reinforced. Now he's not. That behavior is on extinction. What about D, negative punishment? Well, even if you wanted to argue for punishment, if anything, you would say, well, the mom saying we don't have any more juice is punishment in itself, but regardless, it wouldn't be negative punishment. It would be positive punishment because that statement is added, making it positive. So we can't pick D regardless. In this case, Dylan's previously reinforced behavior, no longer receiving reinforcement. So Dylan's behavior is on extinction. Dylan's behavior stopped. Extinction was successful. What changed Dylan's behavior? C, extinction. Bailey's afraid of heights. Each day she goes to the tallest building in her city and goes up one floor higher each day. Each time she goes one floor higher, her sister buys her lunch. The objective is for Bailey to reach the top of the building. What is the sister helping do? The sister is designing this plan for Bailey because she's afraid of heights. And she wants Bailey to go to the top of the building, which seems to be the final behavior. Now, is the sister A, delivering reinforcement? She is, because each time Bailey goes one floor higher, sister buys lunch. Is the sister shaping behavior? She is. As Bailey goes closer to the top, more and more approximations, her behavior is being shaped. So the sister is delivering reinforcement and shaping up Bailey's behavior. The sister is not delivering punishment. Shaping is not a punishment procedure. We're reinforcing approximations. So if Bailey gets scared one day and can't go one floor higher, she won't be punished. She just won't be reinforced. So the sister is helping A, deliver reinforcement as Bailey goes higher and higher, and B, shape that behavior until Bailey can finally reach the top of the building. When we use a line graph to graph our data, what should we record on the x-axis? 
All right, pretty straightforward graphing question to finish up. Remember, line graphs are the most common form of graph in ABA. It's what you're going to be using primarily almost all the time. And we have our y-axis and our x-axis. What goes on the y-axis? The y-axis will include the behavior of interest. So x-axis would not be A. x-axis is time. So sessions, weeks, days, that sort of thing. What we record on the x-axis is C, the passage of time. So if you had your graph, time is here, and then behavior is here, and then we can record each behavior like this. So we'd have our behavior during our stretch of time. Very straightforward. Graphing questions should not be difficult. Don't be intimidated by graphing questions. If you understand a line graph, you understand graphing in ABA as an RBT. All right. Thank you for watching. Check out btexamreview.com for all of our study materials. Make sure you like and subscribe. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.